Hi, my name is Beth Talman. Um, I come from doing work in disaster resilience in El Salvador, but I'm currently hiding out in academia as a graduate student at the Yale University School of Forestry. Today I'm going to talk to you about a disaster model that we've built, taking the latest in disaster science to refine the day's weather report in an experimental platform called Google Earth Engine. We have an amazing opportunity to interact with weather data like never before. We can actually now download geospatial data sets and hone in on potential areas of hazard, looking for areas of fires, floods, earthquakes, and high air pollution. But the problem is sometimes this information is too coarse to make a good decision. What you're seeing here is a red blob of a flood risk zone for South Carolina might be hard for a farmer who lives here to make a decision about whether or not he should evacuate his animals. But science allows us to answer these questions already. Hydrologists can identify the floodplain, and social scientists using census data can predict who is vulnerable and where. So we can go from this red amorphous blob of risk to a refined, qualified risk surface taking the best from the rigors of hydrological and social science, really honing in on where we should spend our time, energy, and resources. So we need to speed up vulnerability science, get the information to people on the ground on time, so that the farmer can now know, before the flood even occurs, that he doesn't live in a floodplain, and he doesn't need to spend the extra resources. So we built our vulnerability algorithm in an experimental platform called Google Earth Engine that has an amazing repository, terabytes of scientific data, and allows us to run our algorithm in near real time, on the fly and in the cloud. I'm working on this project with my colleague, Bessie Schwartz, who's here today. She studies social science, thinks about the social factors of risk. I'm studying hydrology, and I think about where water goes when it rains in a storm. We're bringing the best of our disciplines together under Susan Cutter's framework called the socio-ecological approach to vulnerability that combines biophysical risk factors with social risk factors to paint a more full picture of what vulnerability looks like in a given hazard zone. So basic mm -hmm. hydrological science dictates that water's gonna go to areas of low elevation, low slope, that flooding occurs more often in watersheds with a high percentage of impervious surface, and a large watershed size. Bessie is looking at US Census data to find social indicators of vulnerability. Areas with high percentages of young children, elderly people, poor people, high population density, and low levels of community cohesion. We bring these indicators together in the Google Earth Engine API. This allows us to refine that amorphous red zone of risk, and we can actually predict who is most likely to be at risk how many people there are, and where that is for any given day in the US. Our output looks like this for September 19th for the floods in Boulder, Colorado. The areas you see in bright red is the most refined area of risk. We can count how many people live there, what counties they live in, and what state that's in for any day in the US. We imagine this as an underlying layer of vulnerability for a map mashup, like in Google Crisis Maps. So you could see road closings over this area and maybe predict before it happens where potential problem areas might be or what's going underreported. We've also computed socio-ecological risk surface for Kenya, taking advantage of the elevation and satellite imagery in Google Earth Engine and adding some other data sets like poverty, population from WorldPOP, to predict that there's over a million people at risk for flooding in Kenya. Cloud computing can bring together amazing crowdsourced data sets like Open City's map of buildings in Dhaka with the science from the ivory tower, like the global earthquake model. We can superimpose these data sets and find areas most at risk for earthquakes. So many of you and so many of these organizations are working at the nexus of cloud computing and disaster science and open data. And I think we can build better crisis maps and work together. What does this look like? Well, I think we can go from this georeference PDF of flood risk after Hurricane Haiyan to a raster of vulnerability that we could zoom in on, count how many people live there, have that interact with precipitation data, really leverage the power of science. So I think programmers, scientists, and disaster managers can all come together 
to build more accurate risk prediction tools at the spatial and temporal scale that we need it to make decisions on time. So we barely scratched the surface with this model, but we really come here to find partners <coughs> to further our work and our ideas. We're really excited to collaborate with you. If you're excited too about the potential of science for crisis mapping, then we'd love to talk. Thanks to Yale and Google for supporting this work.